Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So if you're watching this video and you saw my previous video, the one right before I made this one, uh, you may be a bit confused. So first you're saying there's a heat wave, now you're saying that there may be a cool off. Make up your mind. Bear with me here for a minute. Uh, the, the heat wave that's going to be occurring is still in forecast and it's going to be as strong as it was forecasted, if not stronger. Except it's going to be occurring a bit earlier than what I'm going to talk about in this video. In this video, I talk about a cooldown that may occur after the big heat wave. You know, it's kind of like a seesaw sometimes. It doesn't always work out like this, but sometimes it does. When you get a large heat up, a large heat wave, you get a cooldown. You know, again, those cooldowns may uh, vary. And they be equivalent to the heat wave, or they may be a bit cooler. Um, or they may be a bit, you know, not as, as strong. In this case, it looks as if this cooldown will probably be the bigger, biggest one we've had in a while. And let me tell you. It's not just the GFS that's showing that. In fact, the European is the one that's more advocate of that. And usually the GFS is known for, um, uh, I guess, making up these little, uh, you know, possible cooldowns way more often than the European. So I guess this is good news if you want cooler temperatures, which at this point, um, I'm pretty sure most of us do. Um, even if it's, uh, you know, July and it's supposed to be warm, it's just unbearably hot. However, if you would like to subscribe to my channel um, before we get into this video, consider doing so. I do weather-related content. And if you're a returning fan or returning viewer, uh, pl consider liking the video as that really helps out this uh, video get to more people and uh, in turn just, I guess, uh, gets more people to my channel. And if, if, you know, hopefully that's a good thing. <laughs> so let's get into this. Let's start off by looking at the European since this is the model that was uh, the one that was advocating this. And I actually was looking at the models today and uh, let me tell you I was a bit surprised by the fact that uh, the, the European is showing the cool weather signs you know usually it's a GFS that does that and that makes it a little bit more and not reliable but let's take a look at this so th this is some temperature anomalies that are a bit higher in atmosphere but let me tell you that uh, this usually correlates with the temperatures down below um, at surface level uh, pretty well. And let's take a look at this. So, okay, again, the heat wave which I was talking about occurring right here, you can see Sunday, July 26th is going to be around the peak of it. Um, well, it depends where you live, to be honest with you. Um, I said peak of it because I live in Chicago. That's when's the, when that's when's the peak of it's going to be here. But um, I honestly, I obviously have to, uh, you know, be considerate of where other people live and watch from because I only don't have viewers from Chicago, I have all over the location, all over the U.S. So uh, it starts uh, really in the west uh, right now. It's getting pretty warm, and then it moves into Montana, North Dakota. You can see Friday, Thursday, it's like this little heat bubble. It kind of expands, and you can see into Monday, it's across the east coast. But by the time it's Tuesday, where the same areas were very hot a couple days ago, they are now cooler. You can see they're pretty darn cool. And in fact, it covers a pretty large real estate of the United States, especially the Midwest. The West uh, is pretty, uh, you know, up in the in the, in the heat, but but, you know, the West, uh, Washington and Oregon and parts of Idaho are one of the only states that had uh, that have cooler temperatures for the month of July. Um, if you were to look at a composite anomaly, um, which I looked at just minutes ago, I saw that almost everywhere else it was either normal or warmer in some many areas significantly warmer and it was only this little pocket right here which was a bit cooler you guys um, you my friends will be seeing your fair share of heat in the coming days um it doesn't look like this cool off will affect a lot of your area but let me show you that uh per people in the east coast and midwest will all uh, will see some relief and you can see it's tough to see what's gonna come after this um uh, this cool off but um, this is, uh, by the way, the 12Z model run, right? So this isn't the model run that I want to show you. That's current. This is the one that um, was uh, in midday. Now, I wanted to show you this one first to show you consistency. We go 12 hours forward and a European model is still hanging on to this. You can see we still have that heat wave. Uh, maybe not as intense across portions of Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, but really intense across portions of uh, uh, Southern Canada, Ontario, Quebec, and into portions of the Northern Great Lakes. Really just the Great Lakes in general. The region is just going to be absolutely flaming. The East Coast, and again, the West stays hot. But you can see this cool-off is much more significant in this model run. It's... Uh, uh, greater in uh, in uh, magnitude in some areas and also covers an even larger real estate and continues for way longer you can see this is now august 1st yes there is warmth to the north which eventually would come down um and uh, descend i guess if you will across the southern uh, across the u.s to the south from canada but um i want to quickly show you something um aside from you know the 
potential little brief cool off because this by itself isn't really anything uh, too significant. You know, it's showing a brief cool off and a GFS is tagging along with that. But I want to show you a little bit something different. Let's look at North America at a as a continent, the whole you know, the whole the whole North American continent, and let's take a look at um, yeah. Let's go back to North America, and I wanted to look at the uh, f the the 500 height uh, anomalies. So this basically gives us um, the height at 500 millibars of pressure. Um, the temperatures, uh, the te I guess the height anomalies at that pressure, and what that, uh, I guess where that pressure, the 500 millibars is, at what height, um, if it's lower, then it's usually associated with cooler air, and if it's higher, then it's associated with warmer air, and you can see that, um, we've been in a stuck in this pattern where it's just been, uh, I guess, cooler across the portions of Alaska and into the northwestern Canada, while it's been warmer across, uh, I guess, this, uh, guitar-looking shape, uh, like a butternut squash, if you will, uh, across, uh, central, uh, eastern Canada into the central United States and most of the United States, excluding portions of the west, as I mentioned earlier, the northwest, really, to be specific. But notice, as we go forward with the European model, it does break down uh, the pattern that's uh, kind of going on, and we get that cool off, that brief cool off. But it's not really eager. Uh, the heat is not really eager to come back. We could be looking at more cooler temperatures, and really, this this heat is kind of stuck to the north. So we'll have to see what this does. Maybe a cooler start to August. But overall, again, I'll still stick to the scenario that August will uh, most likely end up warmer than it actually. Um, warmer than average and warmer than an average year, I think. But again, hopefully these cool offs will be a bit more frequent than they were in July because July was just an absolutely horrendously uh, warm month. I mean, it's just, it was, you know, hottest time, hottest month of the year for many and it coincided with just ridiculously above average temperatures and that results in, you know, heat that is unprecedented. Let's look at the GFS model. This is again, obviously my favorite. No, I'm kidding. It's not my favorite. It's uh, some people think it's my favorite. I don't think it's uh, really my favorite. I just um, like the GFS because it goes out far and it runs much more frequently, you know, every six hours instead of every 12 hours like the European. So uh, again, it also has this cool off. I mean, you can see the heat wave is definitely there. It's pronounced in a GFS just like the European. It has this cool off, but it really takes this, this cool air mass way to the far to the north and east across portions of the northeast, you know, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, that's about it. And those several states will see the cool off according to GFS, but you can see that it doesn't really develop a heat wave uh, after that. It doesn't develop a warm pattern. It, it goes from, rather from a warmer pattern, you can see that ridge, that little defined ridge right there. I know if this is zoomed out, I apologize. And you may be wondering, oh, what date is this? What time it is? Don't worry about the date, really, because this is so far out. This is just speculation, and I wouldn't be worried about, oh, when, when, or uh, when will this or where will this happen? As this is just uh, speculation, I just want to show you the possibility of some a, a different pattern, and if that pattern does uh, end up holding in. The next couple of days, I'll begin refining the details. But you can see here we have that ridge. Here we have that. It's like an omega pattern. We have a cool off. We have a cool off, and we have a ridge in the central part of the country. This is occurring around the uh, the beginning of August, exactly August first. And if we were to take uh, more looks at this, you can see that this starts breaking down. We see more of a zonal flow, and then possibly going into more of a dipped flow. You can see kind of like that trophy look. So we'll see. The GFS isn't really awfully showing much, um, uh, if you will, uh, much cool air but it's also not showing much uh, signs of a heat wave in a very long range as well but again for this weekend very hot potential cool off uh, the gfs is showing just not as great as what the european is showing you can see it does have a little bit of cooler air here but it's just not significant and mainly the the i guess the warmer air is more dominant and again the most confidence what we have right now is across the weekend warmer air and then the cool off across early uh, late next week or mid to late next week, really, uh, yeah, mid to late le next week, the GFS has it much weaker. You can see it's really showing no signs of a cool off at all um, at our 228, while the European at our 228 is showing some pretty cool temperatures across the United States. So that's definitely something that's a bit uh, surprising. We haven't had a, a cool off like this in a while, so this is definitely something interesting. And I wanted to show you now the two meter temperature anomalies, but for the European, since I was showing you that and them at the higher height, I want to show you them now at surface level. So right now across the Midwest, it is a bit cooler. We are not looking at a heat wave currently, but again, it's warm in the West, warm in the East. Uh, the East will kind of subside in terms of the heat. 
But really, the um, uh, the Midwest starts lighting up with some pretty bright colors and much of southern Canada. And you can see by Saturday, it's just a widespread event across a good portion of the, a third of the United States, if not more, is under uh, really above average temperatures and unprecedented heat. But also notice this little uh, bugger right here. Again, that's our cool off that could be possibly moving into the central United States after, right after this heat wave. You could see it moves in probably to do with some th thunderstorms, this powerful cold front. You could see not too uh, bad, right? The, the temperatures really close to normal um, but in some locations it could be much below normal but then it kind of intensifies as it just sits along here you can see uh, we get uh, a, a average of seven uh, seven to ten degrees below average five to ten degrees below average which isn't huge but you know going from a pattern which is five to ten degrees above average five to ten degrees below average that's you know that's like a ten to twenty degree difference which is really nice and you can see that the European has this, this sticking around for quite a while and really the heat has backed off and it really intensifies across the west so don't get me wrong you know not everybody will be part of this cool off the northwest will just be in loads of pain in terms of the heat but so hopefully you know um they they the the warm up won't last there too long as it, as it has across the Midwest for this July. But notice, uh, July 29th through the 4th of August, 8 to 14 outlook, you can see they backed on with the heat. They're still showing a warmer pattern, the Climate Prediction Center, and that's a safe bet as, you know, this is some uh, very recent data that I'm showing you. And what the Climate Prediction Center wants is uh, a little bit more refinement, a little bit more time to before they make a forecast. But yesterday, uh, or the heat wave video, if you recall, 6 to 10 day outlook, uh, had much more, uh, I guess, confidence in the heat, if you will. Um, they now have lower confidence. Um, they still think it will be above average. It's just lower confidence um, around this, again, that time frame where that cool-off could be occurring. I think, generally speaking, this time frame, uh, the 27th to 31st, will start off warm. And it will transition into a cooler period from the 8 to 14. So you can see that the confidence is very low. And some locations is 40% or lower. Um, but I think that they'll start showing some more blues on this map if the European model holds itself together. And we'll have to see what the uh, what the GFS does. And in terms of the Canadian model, I really don't like to look at this model too often much, but um, you can see that it is in fact agreeing this time around with the U European, which is uh, I guess uh, a bit more what the Canadian does. You can see it shows that heat wave definitely there uh, across a good portion of the southern U.S. Uh, notice the Arctic is also very, very warm. few areas of cooler weather, but overall it's just very, very warm across uh, portions of, uh, you know, Nunavut and uh, Nunavut, really the islands of Nunavut in Canada. Seeing very, very warm temperatures. But you can see this cool off does occur with the Canadian model and shows quite a bit of remarkable coolness. But again, uh, if you notice that this map overall it's there's more, there's more warmth than cool weather, if you will, which isn't really a good thing but it's that's what it is so um thank you guys so much for watching consider liking this video consider subscribing to this channel and i'll catch you all guys in the next episode see ya